this is a really, really straightforward cheese. You make the curds, you cut them, you cook them once, stir them a bunch, done. It's just easy. It's similar to cheddar. You can eat it kind of whenever you want, as early as six weeks, as late as years, though I've never waited years just yet. My name is Jennifer, and today we are going to make a derby cheese. So here we have seven and a half gallons, almost eight gallons of milk, raw cow's milk, and we are going to heat this to 84 degrees. For the calcium chloride, it takes a teaspoon and a half and dilute that in a little bit of water. The milk is at 84 degrees, so I'm adding the calcium chloride. For the culture, this cheese calls for mesophilic culture. So you can either use some sort of freeze-dried culture like Floridanica or Kazu culture, maybe MA11. I think you could pretty much do whatever you want. I am going to use cultured buttermilk from the store. I'm trying to stay away from freeze-dried cultures as much as possible and use what I have available to me right here locally. It just feels a little bit more real. It's not, but it just feels that way. Well, actually, maybe it is a little bit more real. I don't know. So I'm going to use approximately a tablespoon of buttermilk per gallon of milk. So I'm just going to use a half cup of buttermilk. That's eight tablespoons. Just going to stir that in. With raw milk, it has all the good bacteria in it. And so cultures aren't quite as necessary. When you use pasteurized milk, that has like killed off a lot of the good bacteria. So you have to like kickstart it with a lot of culture. With raw milk, you can use less culture because the milk is so strong. It has all the fighting properties in it to turn out some good cheese. So the culture's in here, calcium chloride, and now I'm going to let this culture for 45 minutes. And we're back. First up, we are going to check to make sure the temperature is still 84 degrees. Are we at 84 degrees? We are at 84 degrees. Now we're gonna add the rennet. One and a half teaspoons of rennet. Shake it up first. One. And a half. Stir it up. Dilute it so it will disperse more easily in the milk. And stir it up quickly, 30 to 45 seconds, not much longer, because it will start to set up. I'm going to let this rest for 50 minutes and come back and check for a clean break. While the milk is setting up with the rennet, I am going to show you what the derby cheeses are like that I have already made. So far, when I've made derby cheese, I've only used kazu culture, the dry, freeze-dried culture. Today is the first time I'm using buttermilk, so we'll see how that goes. This is a cheese I've already cut into. I made this back in March, and I opened it just a few months later. You can open it fairly quickly. The other one is this derby cheese number 99 that I made in June, and I am waiting until December. So I'm not going to open that right now, but I just wanted to show you what the whole cheese looks like after it's been aged for a couple months. You can see the where it has not completely knitted together, which is normal for a derby. So it is fairly large. It's not super hard. And this one, the one that was made in, um, a few months before, back in March, you can see that, how the curds did not completely knit. But in the center, it doesn't look that bad. But I'm going to open this up so you can see what it's like and I get to eat it. Smells good. Smells nutty. I'm going to be cutting this up and vacuum sealing it in packages, so I'm going to cut some big slices. It's a fairly hard cheese. You can see it doesn't really squeeze that much. It 
it's pliable, but it breaks. I mean, I guess it's not really pliable, but it's not crumbly and it breaks apart. It's salty. It has a toothsomeness to it. It's a little bit of a chew, but it's not rubbery at all. It's not dry, but it's definitely not a creamy cheese as in the, like the soft creamy ones. And it's sweet, kind of sweet, salty with, it's not sharp, but there's definitely a flavor to it. Um, um, a little bit of a kick of something like it's, you're eating cheese. Like, you know, you're eating cheese. You're not just eating something bland and insipid. It's a nice cheese that will make lots and lots of people happy. So this is what derby cheese is supposed to be like. I'm curious to see how it's going to be with the, with the buttermilk. If that will give it a little bit of a different flavor. I'm sure it will because buttermilk is different, but I'm hoping for the similar texture, a good semi-hard snacking cheese. Mm, mm, so good. One of the cool things about cheese making is learning how to see things apart from following a recipe. So it's been 50 minutes, but just looking at this, is it done? It ripples as I do that, but it looks a little bit fluid. So I'm not thinking it's ready. Well, but then you push on that and it's bouncing, which is a good sign. Let's go in and split. Oh, it's pretty close. I may have been wrong, but I think that's a clean break. Let me check one more. Yeah, I could go another five, 10 minutes or so, but I think it's good enough. I don't want it to go too long. Why don't I want it to go too long? I don't know why. If it's, if it's already set up, you don't want to keep it going longer and longer. It might have something to do with the acid or some other reason, but you want to get it right at the point at which it has the clean break. No point in dilly dallying. Gonna cut the curds into one half inch cubes. Now we're gonna let it set for five minutes for the curds to heal before we start stirring. What we're gonna do now is start stirring these once I've stirred them and broken them up for a little bit. Then I'm going to raise the heat to 94 degrees. So it's only going up 10 degrees over the course of 25 minutes. So slowly, once it reaches 94 degrees, I will turn the heat off and then I will continue stirring for another 10 minutes or so. And then we start straining, pressing and blah, blah, blah. It's super, super basic. Makes this cheese fun. Here we go. Just gently breaking up this curd. Oh, it feels quite cool. I wonder if it's dropped a bunch. I'm going to turn this on. It seems pretty broken up, pretty ready to go. We're setting the timer for 25 minutes and I'm going to temp it just to see where I'm starting out at. Oh, it only dropped to 83, only one degree that it dropped. Apparently Da Vinci was all. These curds seem a lot smaller than I thought for how I cut them. They seem to have broken down pretty small and I'm not sure why. The recipe actually called for two teaspoons of rennet and I reduced it to one and a half teaspoons. I know that rennet often gets my cheeses a little bit rubbery if I'm not careful and I've had trouble with that. So this feels a lot smaller, but it's pretty good. It's a soft curd. It's pretty moist still. So I'm gonna see what the temperature is. Supposed to be 94, it's at 92 and a half. I'm gonna go until this is 94 and then I'll cut the heat and show you what it's like. It is now 94 degrees and now I'm continuing to stir for another 10 minutes just to cook the curd a wee bit more. I'm gonna do the squeeze test just so you can see what it's like. Squeeze lightly and it just kind of gloops. I'm not even squeezing it hard because it kind of like smushes all around. It does not hold together at all. Because it's mesophilic and low temperature, it means that it will also be a higher moisture cheese, which is why you can eat it earlier and you can age it longer if you would like. It's at 94 degrees. The curds are fairly soft, moist, and tiny. I want to show the squeeze test again. Squeezing and look how it's just splooshing out around my hand. It does not hold together. So this curd, High moisture, whoa, and I'm spilling away. And it is very, very tender. So, Nicholas, I need your help right away. Nickel, now, Nickel, I'll send you coming. Please hurry, I'm filming, come on. We're gonna pour curd into here. Is it ready to lift? Come on, 
You got it? No, but yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's very heavy. That's heavy. Yeah. We're gonna go. I need another bucket. Get me another one of these buckets, please. Give me this one right here. No, the kettle, come on, hurry up. Put it underneath here, I don't want to drip it on the floor. And curds. It's fine. Ah, oh, it's splatters. I'm gonna get another kettle. This is a mess. Let go. There we go. This dumps into that. This is so much cheese. Here, lift this up. Lift the edge up. Okay, hold it again. Go for this. Get closer over here. I don't want the camera to see. It's fine. I'll just wash it. Wash my floor after this. Oh, this feels so soft and buttery. Can I go now? No, you can't go. Do I have to keep holding here? Yes, just stay there. Terrible idea. Lean it over this way a little bit closer. There you go. You may leave. Well, that was complicated. Way more complicated than it should have been. So what I'm going to do now is I have some whey in the bottom of this pot that's 94 degrees, theoretically, and then the cheese curds on top. I'm gonna to give this about 10 minutes like this, put a lid over top of it, and let it set up so it can knit together before I do the next step. So just hang on a second, let's give it 10 minutes to set. So now we are going to take this curd, which as you can see, it's already shrinking some, and we're going to cut it. I wet down my cutting board, I washed it, and then I spritzed it with vinegar to sterilize it vinegar solution. So here's the curd. Should we all knit together? There we go, like a, a dome. Come on, come on, come on, baby. So there's the cheese. I'm going to get a new cheesecloth at this point because, you know, messes. I'm going to empty out a little bit of this whey so I have more space when more comes off. You want some whey still in here because I want to keep this cheese as it is cheddaring right at 94 degrees. It's like a double boiler situation and I can turn on the heat if I feel like it's dropping a little bit too much. I'm putting this back in here. Cheddaring cheese is simply the process of cutting the cheese into wedges or slices, the curds, and then you stack them. So you, if you have two wedges, you'll stack them like this, maybe three or four up, and then 15 minutes later or so, you will take deconstruct it again and flip them all, but with the, the wedges that are on top, you'll put them on the bottom. And so they're kind of pressing themselves. So they're not kind of, they are. The cheese curd is pressing itself. And you keep doing it, flipping and restacking every 15 minutes, every hour. It depends on what the recipe calls for, all the while holding it at a certain temperature. That's the cheddaring process. So this is a derby cheese, which comes from England. So it's a similar cheddaring process, but it's much less much less detailed. You can kind of do it, you can kind of wing it and do it sloppy. I'm getting whey spilling everywhere because this is still expressing whey. So it's like a big brain and I just cut down through. Like that. And then I'm going to stack the cheeses in here. So now this gets tucked away and I'll set the timer for 15 minutes. It's sunk down even more. There's the way in there. So this is the first turn. You know it's gonna be easier. Let me just do this. So these go in first, down at the bottom, flipping them. Did I flip that? Like that? Nope, like that. And like that. And here we go for the second set of 15 minutes. And now we're at the second flip at the 30 minute mark. I'm gonna lift this out again. And actually while I do this, I'm going to heat this for just a couple minutes to make sure it stays warm. I'm kind of keeping it in order as I go, how I want to lay it back in there. This was the top. 
and that goes on the bottom like that. And here we go for another 15 minutes for the third and final flip. It's been 45 minutes. Look how much smaller this ball of cheese is getting as it is knitting against itself. That was on the top, so now it's on the bottom. 15 more minutes and then we're done with this process. It has been a full hour, so we are done with this cheddaring process. Now comes the easy part or the fun part of packing it in the mold. We're almost done. Here's the ball of cheese. What I'm going to do is cut this into little cubes. The directions say to tear it into quarter size pieces or, little, or like nickel size pieces like that. But this, this action of digging my finger into the cheese and peeling it off makes my hands really tired. And this doesn't look like much, but it actually takes a good while. So instead of going for that rugged look, which I guess might be better in that there's more cragginess and all the salt gets worked in, I don't even worry about that. I'm just gonna chop it up. So and I chop it into fairly small cubes. Sometimes people do them into larger ones, but then I find that it doesn't quite knit as well. It's quite rubbery at this point and squidgy and it squeaks. I don't know if you can hear that. It tastes very neutral, very, very bland right now, but the texture is really fun. It's kind of dry. If I want to make it smaller, yeah, I could cut it lengthwise. And here's the cheese. It looks like a lot more now that it has been chopped. We're gonna add about a tablespoon of salt per gallon of milk. So in this case, it's almost eight tablespoons, which is nearly a half cup. And I like my cheese salty. Just toss it in. Feels warm, rubbery, and now all scratchy from salt. And it tastes delicious with the salt. Mm. Getting a clean cheesecloth again, just because it gets so wet and sits there for so long. Now we just load up the mold. They say that with a sage derby, you could be putting fresh sage in it at this point. I don't have any fresh sage, but maybe I should try that next. It's a lower temperature now, it's cooling down, it's kind of dry because so much moisture has come off. So this means it's going to be harder to knit together. So it's gonna take more pressure. It says to press it for like 10 minutes at 15 pounds of pressure. I will not press this at a low pressure because it is already cool, it's gonna have trouble knitting together. So it's important to get the maximum amount of pressure without pushing out too much whey. So I'm gonna try probably for about 30 pounds or so for the first half hour. Okay, a little bit of whey is coming out, but not much. And that's at 30 pounds. I'm gonna go a little harder. So right there, it's at 40 pounds. So I'll do this for a little bit and come back and flip it. You can see when I say it has trouble knitting, this is what I mean. See all these cubes are falling off, but it's kind of a semi-decent stack. It's all crumbly and falling apart. It's like, if I could just poke it, it'll probably just like disintegrate. So I'm not gonna poke it. What I am going to do is flip it carefully, and hopefully not spill too much on the floor. You know what, I'm gonna do it on the table. I think the table's safer. I don't like working on this counter. There's not enough space that I can spread out a little bit more and make a mess. So I lift it up, get my hand under, and then just flip, and all the little crumbles fall down. This is why I don't press at light pressure. I only go high because it will not work. It's very bulgy and not nice. And you just have to like force it. Cover it back up and we are going hard now on this. I am done messing around. That is 50 pounds of pressure. I'm gonna let it go till bedtime, probably about five hours or so. During that time, keep pushing it down, making sure it stays at 50 pounds. There's a fly on you. Yeah, see this? See how much it's knitted together? So now it is better, but it is still a loose knit. So it's going to be at 50 pounds, maybe 60. 
So tomorrow evening, so another 20 hours or so. So now it's going to be air dried for a couple days. Let's weigh it first. Six pounds, three ounces. So it's been 24 hours since I got the cheese out of the press. Just sitting at room temperature, drying out. So you can see how it's getting yellow. Time to flip it. Let it keep drying. It's a little bit wet there. It has a bit of an unappealing funk to it. It smells a little bit yuck. I'm not sure what that's about. I hope it's nothing bad. I am a little bit peeved at this cheese because it smells horrible. Right here it is. It's been under this thingy and I've been just leaving it at room temperature, flipping it every day or two, at least once a day usually. It's getting a little bit of white mold or something on it. There's a little bit of dark mold right there. Overall, it's fine, but it feels tacky to me. There's this tacky, sticky feel that I'm not used to, and I'm not sure why. There is no way coming off of this. It's dry. You can hear that. But there is a funk or a, like a stinky smell. It's kind of like a heavy, cloying, stinky smell that makes me feel a little bit sick. So I will have this like sitting on the table and I'll be working on my computer and I get a whiff of it and it's just like, ugh. So I don't know what this is. This is the first time I've had this trouble with, the, with a derby. It's not swelling weird, I don't think. Um... I have had cheeses that smell funky that then end up tasting delicious. So I'm going to be hopeful that this smells good, but I'm going to cut it in half now and backpack it. I'm just going to let this, whatever mold is on it, let it go and see what happens in the bag and keep an eye on it. And maybe I'll have to open it up as I go and like wipe it down with a brine. But let's cut into it as we backpack this and see how it, actually maybe I don't have to. Oh, it'll fit in the bag, so I don't need to do it. So I'm not gonna even cut it. I've never done a washed rind cheese, but they say it smells really bad. I don't know if that's this smell, even though this is not a washed rind cheese. I don't know. This is ready in six months, so I can eat it in six weeks. So six months, we're just gonna do this long term, see if it gets better. August, December, October, November, December, January, February. Two, 15, 23. We'll see if it works.